Congressman Lloyd Doggett is back with us. Uh, summer recess almost wrapping up. You go back, what, next week? That's right. Congress okay. is about to get underway. Um, <coughs> this is a big story. This is on the front page of the paper. $830 million in education aid may not be lost cause. Now, there were, there were reports that the government had rejected Texas's request for the aid, um, but, Congressman, you say we still are going to get the money, just not as fast. Well, I think that's right. You know, I hear so much from your viewers about uh, the need for responsible control of government spending, mm -hmm. and that's what this is about. Mm -hmm. If we send money from the federal government because we identify a need here in Texas, say for border security to protect our borders, and it gets diverted to pay for toll roads or the governor's rent, that's an abuse of the federal spending. And so what I've done here is to say we see a need to improve the quality of public education. We're sending money to Texas for that purpose, and it can only be used for that purpose. Now, why was it rejected in the first place? Walk us through that. It was, it was rejected because the governor did not want to have the accountability that I demand in this amendment. I want to ensure that this money can only be spent for education, not simply subtracted from what the state is already doing for education. Gotcha. And so he did not complete the application he was given. He wrote up one of his own, knowing in advance, having been told in advance, that wouldn't work. And he's still trying to avoid the accountability of seeing that federal aid to education actually go to aid education here in Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, the amount of money that would come, for example, the Austin Independent School District is about enough to close the budget gap that they have. Mm -hmm. I heard from the Round Rock School Superintendent the other day, supportive of this concept as well. Last year, we sent $3.2 billion of federal aid to education to Texas that the state of Texas diverted to other purposes because they've got so many budget problems up there. Mm -hmm. It was quite clear that if we sent this additional money here, that instead of going to Austin or Round Rock or the other schools around the state, the state of Texas would take that money to plug its budget gap. I We're not here in doing this federal aid to education to protect the governor's job. We're here trying to keep kids in school and improve the quality of education. So now that it's been rejected, does it have to be resubmitted? What's the status? It does. And okay. there were there was an exchange of letters uh, yesterday between the governor's office, the Texas Education Agency actually, and the Department of Education. Mm -hmm. And quite clearly, they knew this all along. It was really bad faith to submit the application in this form. There is no constitutional restraint on Governor Perry doing the same thing that he did to apply for federal funds last year and assuring that this money will be used for the purpose that we intended. It seems to me that's just good management of government funds, and we need lots more of that. So if it's resubmitted then, then in the right... Well, he doesn't right? want to resubmit oh. it because he wants to use this money for purposes other than education. So he's hoping he will delay long enough that maybe Congress will change the law, and eventually he'll get uh, uh, complete discretion as to how this money is used. I hope we will stick by the position that is the law today, that if we provide federal aid to education, it must be used to aid our local schools. How in the world are we going to be able to compete with the Chinese, the Indians, the Germans, people all around the world, if we keep taking money out of our education system instead of working to improve the quality of public education? That's what this amendment is about also. I want to talk about the Bush tax cuts uh, set to expire at the end of the year, you said, right? Yes. So what's going to happen with that because President Obama wants to end them? So. Well, I think that, uh, you know, here in an economic downturn, there is no way that Congress will increase taxes on middle class working families in this country. Uh, we also hear often, you know, why don't you guys stop bickering and try to work things out? Well, there is a compromise with reference to these tax cuts. We have proposed that 98 percent of the people be able to extend their tax cut for at least another year during this time of economic downturn. And some people are insisting that 98 percent is not good enough, that we must have 100 percent of those tax cuts. I think those who earn more than $250,000 a year can get by on the tax levels that were in place during the Clinton years, which were pretty prosperous years. Mm -hmm. That's so for we, a couple, right? That's, that's yeah. $250,000 per family. Per family. Mm -hmm. And so there would be a slight increase going back to the Clinton era levels for those families and for everyone else their tax cut would be extended. That's one of the battles that I expect we'll be dealing with between now and the end of the year because we must act this year. Real quickly, in the next uh, coming weeks they're going to be uh, recommending to continue uh, government 
services. So yes. what's going to happen with that? The fiscal year for the federal government <coughs> excuse me, ends okay. uh, September the 30th. Mm -hmm. So we must pass the appropriations to keep the government going into next year. It's an election year. I'm sure there's some people that will be demanding they get their way or the government can't continue to operate. I hope we act responsibly and set a reasonable level of spending and include good fiscal controls. Okay. Well, we'll be watching. Thank you, Congressman, for being with us. We appreciate it. All right. You. Still ahead, what weather can we expect this